Okay, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so I'm Luis from Colombia. I'm working with the Symbiotic ADA. Uh, I'm actually from Onchip, but we are working a collaboration. Uh, and today I'm going to present AC1, status and challenges. So this is the agenda of the presentations. First, I'm going to talk up about the team, then the problem that we wanted to tackle. Uh, what is this project? What is AC1? What has been done? Um, what is needed to close the gaps uh, between uh, commercial tools and open source tools? And some conclusions. So, the team. So, uh, the team is formed by four parts. So, the first one is Symbiotic EDA. Uh, Symbiotic EDA is a company uh, focused on formal verification tools and FPGA tools. Their founders are Clifford Wolf, the author of Josis, so very known here, and Edmund Humenberger, who was the one that actually had the idea to do ASIC1, and the one that assembled the team. Uh, then there is us on CHIP. So we are a research group from Colombia. Uh, we, our main expertise is to do, to build RISC V based microcontrollers and their peripherals. Uh, we gained some recognition back in 2016 because we were the first ones to ever fabricate a working RISC V uh, microcontroller in, on silicon. So, uh, yeah, and so, but we are mainly a research group. Uh, this, oh, I forgot to mention that within this team, I am the analog guy. So I was the one that uh, was in charge of the analog IPs for this uh, design. So yeah, I know that most, most of you are digital uh, oriented, but yeah, I hope I can answer all the questions at the end. Uh, the other two guys or the other two uh, members of the team are Matthew Guthos, a professor in, of uh, University of California, Santa Cruz, uh, creator of the Open RAM memory compiler, and Tim Edwards, also another guy very known in the community, uh, as a developer of Ravenchip. He is uh, the senior vice president of Ifables, developer and maintainer of Magic and Kuflow, and author of X Circuit. And in this project, particularly, he was a consultant. So why on chip? So we have some experience uh, doing RISC V based microcontrollers. So as I told you before, the first one, uh, which was actually the first RISC V on silicon working. And because of that, we gained some recognition, as I said, and we work on 2017 with Sci5 on Tucan, uh, which was a really nice collaboration. All of these chips have been silicon proven. So yeah, that's why we are within this team. So the problem we wanted to tackle. So I really like this slide over here because it actually says what is the problem. Why, why open source hardware is not like open source software? So this was a presentation that Jason Lee, CTO from Sci5, uh, did on Samsung Forum last year. And he was asking the audience, and I asked the same question here, uh, do you know any hardware-based company of only 13 engineers that costs more than $1 billion? No, right? So, yeah, the same answer was from the audience that, that day. And he asked them why, and he showed this slide. And this slide says, says it all. Uh, he was comparing this $1 billion, uh, this $1 billion company uh, of only 13 engineers because Instagram was sold by $1 billion and they were only 13 engineers. And he showed the slide and said, okay, this is the reason. And what, what can you see here? You see open source tools, right? So open source tools to develop and open source tools uh, and open source infrastructure, everything. So when you are in the software world and you want to develop something valuable, uh, you don't have to start from scratch, right? You can do something valuable with the tools that are already there and build from there. That's pretty much the same that we have here, right? Exactly the same. So yeah, that, that's actually a problem. And 
why is that? So, uh, mainly because it's very costly. I mean, it's very expensive to fabricate a ship, right? So this is a slide from DARPA. Uh, and you can see here that the cost varies from the hundreds of thousands of dollars to the tens of millions of dollars to fabricate a ship. So it's very expensive. And here you count engineering, packaging, EDA tools, tape out, and IPs. So because all of this, then we don't have actually an open source hardware ecosystem, at least for tape out or to fabricate a ship. So what are we doing about it? And as we, I, I said, as a community, so of course, uh, DARPA is doing something. They are investing right now, I think, it says 100 million, but uh, in reality, I think they are investing more than $1.5 billion on projects. Uh, so they call it the Electronic Resurgence Initiative project. And they have a couple of, of tools that are really, I think they are going to be something at the end, I think in 2022. So one of them is Open Road. Uh, it has been already uh, mentioned here. Uh, but yeah, here is the, the GitHub of Open Road. You can go there and see what they are up to. I'm going to talk about this at the end of the presentation also. I'm going to mention some of the tools. Uh, yeah, but what else are we doing? And as we now, I say it as I'm doing something with our uh, team with OnChip. So this is Itsy Chipsy. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Uh, it was news last year. Uh, it's basically an IC uh, service for prototyping, for prototyping your own chip for $100. So that's basically, it's still, it hasn't been released yet. We are working on the platform, uh, but we are very excited uh, about this. So it's basically, uh, in, in a sentence, is a multiplayer chip within, a, within an MPW, within a multiplayer wafer. So that's basically easy chipsy. I'm not gonna extend on this, uh, but I'm gonna be here after the presentation and tomorrow. So if anyone wants to ask about this, uh, we'll be here. Uh, so, but besides the 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 how costly it is to make a ship, uh, what other there are other stoppers in the industry for 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 having an open source hardware ecosystem. So they are uh, there are. So some of them are from the EDA companies and the foundries. So for example, let's say a professor wants to collaborate with the open source hardware community and wants to open the IPs that he has developed in his group, right? Can he do it? Well, uh, he can't. Uh, this is an answer from a representative from Cadence in ETH Zurich this year, June 2019. And basically because you are using educational licenses, you cannot open whatever you're doing, you cannot open it. So yeah, this is a inconvenient, but let's say that you develop your IP using open source tools, or uh, you have paid for your licenses. I mean, you have a commercial license. Can you uh, still open it? Well, no, you cannot. Why? Now this time is the foundries because of PDKs, NDAs. So right now, I think this is the main stopper for having an open source uh, IP catalog for, for analog IPs, like LibreCourse, but for analog IPs. If you go there, you are not gonna see anything about analog IPs, actually, anything, even, not even DARPA. If you go to DARPA, I think uh, in the GitHub, they have an ADC, and you can see the netlist, but you cannot see the dimensions of the, of the devices, and basically because of this. So you cannot open, an analog IP. So this is a problem. And I, I, this is something that I think is not gonna, I mean, I, I don't see an end to this uh, in, the, in the coming future, right? So uh, yeah, this, this shouldn't be a, mo a bummer. Uh, you can work around this. Uh, for example, you can ask a foundry, okay, give me the NDA, then I will sign it. Uh, we did that in this, uh, in this project with uh, XFAB, a uh, German uh, company. A foundry and yeah they are I think from all the foundries that I work with uh, they are the more open to this kind of open source uh, environment 
It's still, the, you have to sign the NDA, uh, but you can do it. Uh, TSMC is a little bit more complicated. Uh, with TSMC, it's, it's more complicated to do that. But yeah, so this shouldn't be, uh, I mean, okay, then we cannot do anything. No, we have to work with what we have. So in this project, we are focused more on whether if, we, if you can uh, do a chip for tape out using only open source tools, so including IPs. So basically, that's the main uh, objective of this project. So being told that, so I don't know if you know about Raven. Some of you, maybe. So Raven uh, was a work by Ifables uh, by Tim Edwards, which who, that's pretty much the reason he's on board uh, consulting us. So this ASIC one is like a step forward or a learning process from uh, Raven. So the idea here was to close the gaps or to see the gaps that Raven had and to show to the community. So uh, for example, uh, they claim that it's uh, completely open source, uh, but yeah, that's not very much true because they use a lot of proprietary IPs. So they use, for example, uh, well, the XFAB standard cells. They use uh, the paths from XFAB. They use the analog IP from XFAB. Uh, they use the SRAM from XFAB. So everything is proprietary. Uh, well, they, there is the Pico R5 from Clifford also. Well, that's open source. Um, but yeah, and they did this with open source tools. So you go to Ifables and you can see that. But can you actually make the, the entire flow with open source tools? Like, can you, can you do an analog IP with open source tools? Can you integrate that? Can you do all that with open source tools? So that was the main question with this, of course, under PDK in the A. So that, but that was the main question. Can we do that? So based on that, we, we did an initial plan. And the initial plan was to do something similar to Raven. So this is a core that we have, in, we have already implemented uh, in, the, in the past ourselves, but using commercial tools. So here you can see a core designed by our, well, everything is designed by ourselves, except for the paths, which are proprietary from XFAB, and an SRAM, but that SRAM was used as a backup for the open RAM in case it, it failed. So it was like in a backup, but we also have an SRAM. Uh, we had, I, I will talk about that. Uh, so uh, we designed also the power management unit, all the peripherals, uh, digital and analog peripherals. So for example, uh, a DAC uh, and the buses for this uh, microcontroller. Okay, or at least that was the initial plan, but unfortunately, well, this is the reality. So this is going to be ASIC one, an SPA connected to a bank app. So a bank app, I don't know if all of you know what is a bank app, it's a reference voltage uh, circuit. So it gives you only, a re so it's not very, a very exciting circuit. It only gives you a really uh, precise voltage and that's it, right? But uh, in the analog world, it's like a must to know for a, a circuit designer. So, uh, so the SPI is used to configure the bank app so you can calibrate it. So because when you fabricate, then you have process corners and maybe it's not gonna be exactly as you see in, in the simulation, but yeah. So do we consider this a failure? No, we don't because uh, the main purposes or the main objectives of this project was to see, to learn what is out there uh, within the open source tools. Uh, to work with them uh, to see if it was possible to fabricate or to do an entire ship from nothing to uh, tape out, including uh, the analog IPs and including all the things that I will talk. Can you do it with open source? So that was the main purpose. And to find the gaps in the design flow. So I will talk about it also and of course share it with the community. So that's, that's, that was the main purpose. So oh, although we have a simpler uh, circuit at the end, I think we cover a lot of stuff that wasn't covered before. So what has been done in ASIC1? So first I have to talk about what, how, how we do the things normally in our group. So how, we, how do we normally design to tape out? So these are the steps. 
for design to tape out. So here in the left, you have a lot of uh, IPs, uh, standard cell library, pattern generation, verification. And we put it here in order to uh, highlight what is on the, on the right. So the right is the actual flow that we do for uh, to tape out. So what we do is that once you have uh, an, an, the analog IPs and the digital IPs and all the peripherals that you need to, that you have designed everything, then you go for chip in generation and chip integration. And for that, we use Chisel. Uh, we learned that from our SciFi uh, friends when we were working with them. So uh, we use Chisel for that. It's a very powerful uh, tool. Um, from there, you go to synthesis. Um, well, in synthesis, as yeah, you, you use some constraints, and then you got uh, uh, the the RTL for the uh, for 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 the placement. But before that, then you go and do floor planning. Floor planning is the process where you actually says, okay, where is going to be everything, right? All the blocks, how are going to be uh, placed in the in the chip and among them, uh, also, how are you going to place, for example, the sea of gates if you have, for example, different power domains? So you say, okay, here is going to be the 1.8 volts for digital, here is going to be the 3.3 volts for analog. Um, and then you do power planning, and power planning is basically, uh, you say, uh, you decide how and where you are going to connect the ring, the power ring, the power rings of the chip, so the ground and all the supplies that you need. Um, after that, you do clock synthesis, and then you place, you go to placement and place uh, all the, from a, standard, uh, from a standard cell library, you place all the components that were, were obtained from synthesis. Then you do routing, and after routing, you do DRC, LV, LVS, uh, well, I forgot to mention that uh, in all the steps, there is a block on the right that is called ver, that's for verification. So uh, we, all, we do two types of ver verification, formal verification and functional verification. Um, uh, we only do formal verification for the first step, but for, uh, from there forward, you or we do functional verification. Well, and after you do the final verification, then you do a sign-off backend, where you actually do. Do I have only five minutes? I thought it was. Uh, yeah, they they told me it was uh, 40 minutes. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So uh, so sign-off, and you do electro migration, you do electric rule check, IR drop, signal power integrity, and yeah. Basically, that's it. And then you're ready to tape out. Easy, right? Of course, uh, that will be for the design to tape out. And that could also be for digital IP. But what about analog? Because everybody always talk about digital, digital. Nobody's talking about analog. Nobody's talking about analog IPs. So here, I'm here to talk about analog IP. So how we normally do the flow for an analog IP. So normally you have an schematic, so you build a schematic and you build, you build a test bench, and uh, you go to the pre-layout phase where you actually validate uh, that schematic, that analog cell, you validate, va validate it through corners and Monte Carlo simulations, right? Um, if, the, if the specs are within, I mean, if the performance are, are within the specs, then you go to layout, and in the layout you do the physical implementation of the chip, of sorry, of the IP. And let's say that you did the layout, everything is good, and then you verify, you do verification of DRC and LVS. If everything is fine, then you go to parasitic extraction, and you do again a validation. So that's that part of the validation is called post layout uh, simulations. Post layout validation, you do again corners and Monte Carlo but this time with, with uh, parasitic extraction, and then you see if the specs are okay again, and then you're ready for chip integration, right? So this is the analog IP flow. So based on the way we do things, so we say, okay, let's see what are the tools that we need for this in the open source. So uh, to, to remark here, there are a couple of 
tools or steps that are shared, like LBS DRC, so the layout part. So we decided to use the same, um, the same tools for both of the flows. But basically, that's what you need. That's, that's the summary of the tools you will need in order to tape out a chip. So uh, before going to, to, to the actual tools that we use, I want to make some honorable mentions besides the DARPA project. So at the beginning of the project, we look for Politida and K layout for DRC, ERC, ELBS. But at that moment, it wasn't that complete. So we, we, uh, we, knew, we knew that we had to work on that a lot. So we decided to go with Magic, for example, for layouts. So we're using Magic. And there are two reasons for that. One is the LBS and DRC. And the other is because Tim was with us, and he's the one that is maintaining Magic. So uh, yeah, it was an obvious reason. But uh, the guys from Klayout, uh, Matthias, uh, he has been done a lot, a lot of releases, uh, updates on Klayout, and I think now they can actually, they have a, 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 a much better tool for DRC and LBS. So you have to be, uh, you, ha you have to pay attention to this project because I think it's going to be something. Uh, so, okay, so now the analog flow with open source tools. Can you do an analog IP with open source tools? Well, the fast question is yes, but I'm going to. Uh, so this is the exact same flow that I showed before, but with the tools. So for the analog cell, we didn't use any schematic tool. We could have, we could have used, for example, like circuit or electric, but we decided to go with an, uh, a flat, a normal spice uh, uh, with ng spice and with any ng spice used as the as the engine for the simulation. So we did uh, corners. We have done corners. We haven't done Monte Carlo yet, but we did corners, and we did a combination between ng spice and octave. So the da the data from ng spice was used uh, with octave as the uh, and we post processing because uh, there are some stuff that you will like to show uh, in a prettier way. So basically because of that. After that, so we use magic for layout, DRC, and uh, parasitic extraction. And for LBS, we did a combination between magic and netgen. So magic extract the netlist and uh, netgen compare them. And basically, you go again through the validation where you use again ng-spice and octave. So, and these are some of the results. So that's the architecture of the bank gap that we did. It's a very classical architecture. I'm not going to extend on that. Uh, and we did, we, we did a hierarchical approach. So actually, would you write the net list for all the blocks, and then you just put it on, the, on a top-level top net list, and that's it. So you can see there the highlights are the same, the same color as the blocks on the, on the circuit. And we use the, the tree uh, folder approach on the left. So uh, if you work on the project, you can see this uh, tree structure. Uh, we did also the uh, corners in GSPICE plus octave uh, simulation. Uh, so you had to write uh, some scripts, and then you can obtain the results from the right that they don't look pretty nice, but OK. So basically, uh, what I'm saying here is that with ng-spice capa output capability, you can have like a text file where you can summarize the performance of your chip or of your analog IP, uh, some stuff like uh, noise, power consumption, um, uh, rising time, uh, the actual voltage at certain uh, time, uh, and but you can also display them in a, in beautiful plots with the help with Octave, right? So that's why we use Octave for this post-processing part. Uh, for the layout, as I said, we use Magic. So we use also the hierarchical approach. So you do all the blocks independently. So you can see here some of the blocks from. Uh, uh, this is uh, from Magic. Um, uh, I have to remark here that 
we have fabricated this band gap several times in our uh, previous microcontrollers. Not the same band gap, but in another technology. Um, and this time we use uh, completely open source tools, uh, but the results are remarkably uh, similar. So that's uh, pretty cool to say. Uh, only using uh, open source tools are very similar to what uh, you can get from uh, commercial tools. Uh, and this is, that will be, if you connect everything, you merge all the blocks together, then yeah, this is what you get. This is the band gap, uh, and yeah, 200 mi micrometers times 130 micrometers. And then after you have the layout, then you have to uh, check for LDS. Then you do magic and agent. This is the result over here. And after that, you do parasity extraction, and then you go for the validation again, post uh, layout. Uh, we are, right now, we are at this stage of the project. So I, that's why I'm not presenting here post layout uh, results. But uh, yeah, I think in the, in the next month it's going to be over and we are planning to tape out on November. So now, uh, open source tools for design to tape out, right? So now we saw the analog IP flow. Now this is uh, the flow with open source tools. So you can see here that some are missing. So for example, fruit planning, power planning, clock synthesis, sign off. So basically, uh, they don't exist or they are incomplete. Incomplete through planning, power planning, because you can do something like that with Greg, with Greg, Greg Wolf, sorry, um, but that I uh, that we didn't we didn't see anything was uh, clock synthesis and sign off backend. I will talk about what is DARPA doing, or I will show only what is DARPA doing on do and those steps. But they are trying to cover everything. Uh, also, to say here to remark. We had to do some in-house tools, uh, so we didn't we didn't took everything from from outside. We did some, and some of the stuff we did was uh, we did a standard cell library, so we ha have our own standard cell generator. Uh, we did the pad ring generator. Uh, we did all the analog IPs, and of course the generation the chip generation. Which sell, so we we did all all of that uh, in house. So ah, for formal verification, we use uh, Josis. For synthesis, we use uh, Josis. Uh, for functional verification, only digital, we use Perilator. But for mixed signal, we use NGSpice. And for Placement, we use Grey Wolf, and for routing, we use QRouter. So basically, we use the same flow that has QFlow in open circuits, but I'm I'm putting here there I, I'm putting there I'm putting here all the all the all the tools separated. So I I will I will talk about the the tools that we design in house. So this will be the chip generation uh, with T-Cell. So you can see here on the top level, uh, we did, well, we did the, this, this only showed the instantiation of, of the chip, which uh, I think Chisel is a really powerful tool to do that, to instantiate the entire chip and prepare for a uh, tape out. But we also, you can also do, uh, describe uh, the SPI, for example, or any digital hardware that you have with Chisel. So we did that also. Uh, the band gap, uh, we use a black box, um, um, we use a black box, so we instantiate the band gap, and we also put within the chip generation the pad ring algorithm uh, for the for yeah for to generate the pad ring basically. Uh, I I said before, as I mentioned before, this is some of the results of the standard cell generator. This is something that we are very proud uh, of because this is something that you can only see in I don't know in in in, his, in the industry. So we are generating our own uh, uh, cells, but this tool is still incomplete. So for this project, we actually uh, did use uh, the XFAB standard cell library uh, because some of this is much of the cells are still are still missing. So we are working on it. So the pad ring generator. So this work. Uh, as I said, it was uh, is written uh, in, in Scala. Um, 
So what it has different from other pad ring generators is that it's open and because and also it takes into account the package. So not all of the pad ring generators take into account the package. This does. So for example, we use a QFN48 and uh, you assign all the pins and it, it just uh, uh, it, it, it do the pin assignment to the package rather to the pad ring. So it automatic, automatically f uh, fills everything according to the user pitch as well. Uh, so this is important because uh, when you are wire bonding the chip to the PCB, for example, or to the, or to the package, uh, if you don't take into account the pitch, then it's going to be very difficult. Maybe you haven't done it. Uh, we have a wire bonder. Um, in the lab, so we have done the exercise to actually uh, wire bond the chip to the PCB and yeah, at the beginning we didn't take this into account and it was very, very hard. And finally, you have automatic domain power cut, so in this project we have two power domains, the analog one and the digital one, so it automatically uh, put the, pa the power cut. Uh, I'm not going to talk deeply about uh, the flows, but I'm going to talk. I'm going to mention some of the issues that we found uh, during this flow with the, with the open source tools. So, for example, with Josis, uh, you cannot specify constraints. So that's uh, a bummer. Uh, for timing analysis, we're thinking about using OpenSTA, which is an open road tool. Um, but yeah, you cannot you cannot do that with Josis. Uh, multi output cells are not possible. So that's another problem. Uh, with, Greg with Greg Wolf, sorry, uh, you cannot do actually a global pad ring and see of gate placement and with Greg Wolf. So basically, that means that you cannot do digital on top, real digital on top for the for the tape out. So th this is a, this is a problem. Um, and yeah, basically Greg Wolf moves. You you cannot specify. A, and a specific position for the for the block, so it it moves it moves them and it changes the size of the chip. So yeah, it has some problems, but we did some workarounds. Uh, routing, Q router, you know, you cannot do power rings, so we did that manually. Uh, because of that, you cannot also do a stripe connections to the blocks from the power rings. And um, and we had to do manual routing for the analog part. So that's another problem, so you have to do that. But uh, we consider these non-stoppers, so we did some workarounds on this, and this was the final result. So, uh, well, we are still, as I said before, we are still in the verification part, post layout. Uh, but you can see here the SPI on the top left, the bank gap on the top right, and on the on the bottom, you can see uh, decap uh, generated, uh, and yeah, and the pad ring. So basically, that is that's the layout displayed on Magic, right? So we can say you can do a design to tape out with open source tools. Uh, still, uh, if you have to ask me, what are the stoppers or what were the stoppers of these projects? I will mention three. So what is needed to close the gap, so I call it stoppers, issues. So in the analog part, so I can summarize that, I can summarize that in a single sentence and is the most simple thing turns into a coding marathon, basically. So you want to do parametric analysis. You have to go, you have to read all the NGSPICE documentation and you have to learn the language in order to do that. And that should be transparent for the designer. Why? Because then it's going to take you a lot of time for designing. So this project, only the bank app, I think it took me uh, three, four times more than it actually took uh, take me with commercial tools. So that's a problem. We are working on, um, on a tool. If any, anyone has worked uh, with analog design environments from Virtuoso? No one? Maybe? Ooh. Yeah, digitals, guys, only. Okay, so, yeah, so we are working on something like that, trying to, to replicate that in an open source uh, manner so that the designer doesn't have to do all this scripting
for uh, testing the chip, the testing the analog IP. Uh, but one of the reasons we are, uh, uh, why we are here is because we want to ask, ask for help from the community. We, are, we want to ask you guys, okay, we need help on this. Uh, would you be on board on this project? So that's why I, one of the reasons I'm here. Uh, the other issue we found is DRC uh, verification. Uh, so mainly the, the, main, the main reason here, the main uh, problem here is that you have to do you have to write the entire tech, the, the entire tech rule, techno technology rule, uh, manually. So uh, normally the foundries do that for cadence, they do that for uh, mentor, they do that for other uh, commercial tools. But if you are using open source, then you have to do it manually, and that's a lot of work. So if you if if we can do a tool that can translate the PDK information, the, the PDK, uh, 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 yeah, the, the, the PDK information rules, then you can obviate this problem. So, and this is a problem if you want to work on other technologies, because this work was done actually by Tim Edwards. So he actually took the time and did all the translation to magic for this. So this is a problem that we have. Uh, we are asking also help on this. And the other problem is, of course, the missing tools, right? So it wasn't a stopper for this project, but it, it, it will be a stopper for more complicated systems on ships, for sure. So if you don't have power planning, if you don't have fluid planning, you don't have sign off, then yeah, for more complicated systems on ships, you are not gonna be able to. Uh, but as I said before, DARPA is working on this. They are almost covering everything, except for sign up backend. I didn't see any, any tool about that, but uh, everything else is almost covered. So yeah, these are the tools. If you want to go to DARPA, uh, GitHub, you are going to find them. Uh, remark, a remark here, they are still using Justice. So with this, you can see that Justice is a very powerful tool. So these are the other tools that we are using. Again, no sign off. And well, the conclusions. I know that everybody's tired, wants to go to the hotel, to, to home. But yeah, so conclusions. Analog IPs and digital IPs can be done with open source. So well, at least analog, simple analog IPs like the Bang app, you can't do it with open source. Uh, so we, I think we are one step closer to open source analog catalog, Libre, Libre Analog, something like that, maybe. Um, it is possible to make a system of ship with only open source tools, but for more complex system of ships, still lots of tools are missing. So we hope that DARPA gets right or someone here get, get, get it right, and we, we can have it uh, for uh, tape out. Uh, there is pro promising work on there. Uh, there's still, if you go, for example, to the GitHub of, of DARPA, I think it's a mess. Uh, it's very unorganized. Uh, but I think they are working right now on that, making it a, a little bit more organized. But yeah. And yeah, we need help. We need your help. Uh, if anyone wants to collaborate with this project, please uh, contact us. Uh, the repo will be open soon under PDK NDA. So if anyone wants to work on that, please contact uh, me, well actually Edmund from Symbiotic. Um, he will make you sign an NDA with uh, XFAB and then you will have the repo for you. And that's basically it, thank you very much. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. Um, so how much of this work do you think can be reused? I mean, this is a pioneer project in many ways. Uh, so how much of this work would be redundant next time you do it? Next time you do a I2C controller or something like that? Uh, under, under PDK, everything. Under NDA, everything. I mean, as I said, if you contact uh, Edmund, you can get the entire project, everything, uh, except for some of the tools that 
haven't been uh, finished, like the standard cell library uh, generator, uh, but everything else uh, we can uh, share it with the community. How much do you need to rework? Uh, what it, uh, for similar projects, okay. So if you want to build more analog APs, then that's going to be more time consuming. Uh, if you have all the details already verified and everything, then it will be only use the tools, basically. So it's, it will be simple. It, the the costly part there will be the, the analog APs. Yeah, so you mentioned that uh, open sourcing the actual design is hard. Uh, once once this is open cell library is complete, can you then have an actual ecosystem of open source uh, designs? Uh, no, because of the PDK NDA. So basically, that's uh, we cannot do anything about it. That, that's that's the reality. So, as I said, you can go. For example, DARPA is saying, ah, analog IP is free, open source. Go to the to the GitHub. You can see there the netlist, you can see the architecture, pretty cool. But then if you see the, the details, if you go and see the dimensions, so you want to see the dimensions because that's everything in, the, in a design, you cannot, you cannot see the dimension of the transistors. So, and basically that's because PDK and the ACE. If, if, if you have your own cell library, but what we need the NDK for? What, or what, I don't understand what the NDK and Ah, okay, is so, sorry. So, uh, the PDK basically is the, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the physical design kit. Uh, so, it, it has all the models for the transistors, yeah, all the models for uh, all the devices that you need, uh, resistors, capacitors, everything. So, yeah, maybe from, from the digital part, it's not going to be a problem because I mean, I mean, digital works uh, fine. That's not a problem. But if you're an analog guy, you want to design something, then you need that. You don't have it. Uh, from the standard cell a point of view, that's another problem because normally a standard cell library are proprietary. Yeah? I don't think there is a, a standard cell generator out there, for example. So. I just want to remark I'm a little bit less pessimistic about analog stuff because I think for, for this conference most people are digital and maybe want to have a not too high performance ADC and DAC and they can do a lot of things. And I think for these things we can make generalized architectures that can generate something when you have the, the design rules and then the people themselves don't need to sign the NDA. And that's what I want to go for. Uh, I, I, I want to be clear. Uh, I'm I mean, I, I don't want you to be pessimistic about it. Uh, the purpose of this is that, to show this is that, hey, you can actually design your own analog IP using open source tools. You can. That's something I think, I, I don't know if someone has said it before, but yeah, uh, you, can, you can do it. Uh, the problem is that you cannot share it with people. Completely, you cannot. So in order to do that, if you want to share it, okay, I want to sh open my IP, then the other guy, the other person has to sign the NDA, basically. That's what I'm saying. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> so thank you very much.